Luigi Tut here, and these are some shows that I am torn on going into this new 2011 fall lineup of TV. I am a slob. Okay, so these torn, which means I may like, I may dislike, from what I've seen of the previews and the premise, I'm a little torn. I just don't know which way to go. Uh, How to Be a Gentleman is one I'm torn on. This is going to be the guy that played Vince's big older brother on Entourage with some other guy. And also uh, Dave Foley's in this. I'm a big Dave Foley fan. Although I watched some previews, I saw the trailer, and he looked like way older in this. It's really sad because if you go back to like the early 2000s, he looked like a guy who could play late 30s. And now he looks like a guy in his early 60s. And that's just a 10 year difference. It shouldn't be that way. The man's been through a lot with that damn divorce. But anyway, the idea of this is uh, the Vince's brother character who has facial hair. He's like this rough, tough guy. And uh, he had a friend from uh, high school who isn't that kind of guy. He's kind of a wimpy guy. When I have friends, actually, Kenny bullied, but they rekindled some kind of friendship. And the Vince's brother guy is going to teach him how to be a man or how, or he'll teach him how to be a gentleman. Something like that. It's a wacky, opposites attract kind of show. Um... My only criticism is I hate this kind of, uh, you gotta do this to be a man, or you, you're not a man. I, I don't like that. I mean, if you're you're a man, if you're a man, I mean, you're born a man. I, I always hated that, you know, you have to kill this many people to be considered a man. You gotta sleep with this many ladies to be a man. Don't you know that? I just, uh, always, that macho bullshit always goes through me, and I really never had to deal with it because... I'm a man, but that's going to grate on me watching this show, you know, him saying, well, you're not a man, or you're not a man, but I think it ha could have some touching moments, and uh, actually, they both rub off on each other, and it sound right, in good ways, and they both take characteristics they want to go on with in their life, so, yeah, wimpy guy and, you know, macho guy team up and improve each other, so, I, I, I want to like it. But uh, it could do something really stupid and make me dislike it, so we'll see. <sighs> Two Broke Girls. Now, this is getting a lot of play. And I think this is really, it feels a lot like Big Bang Theory in a way. Just, uh, you know, people that don't get along living together. Just something along those lines. It's about uh, one rich girl and one poor girl who's actually played by Kat Dennings, who I'm a big fan of. I know she was on YouTube for a long time. I like Kat. And the rich girl is uh, some blonde that looks kind of like Paris Hilton. And the whole premise is the, you know, the rich girl is poor and she has to take a waitressing job with Kat. And Kat has to also move in with her or something. I don't know. It's it's really, you know, it's kind of like a lot of little mishaps happen and they end up together. And it's like a female version of the odd couple. And they'll be living together and uh, whatever. So we'll see. And the other side, the, all those, you know, antics of uh, some rich girl trying to learn how to waitress and stuff and how she fails and how the tips go down and how they all share the tips. Ah, you don't get many tips from her because she's a bad waitress. Um, so, yeah, that's the idea. I, I think it could be funny at moments, but I don't think it could really be deep. I think it's going to be really shallow, kind of like, like I said, you know, kind of like the odd couple or kind of like Laverne and Shirley. It just seems like a really old throwback. Almost like there's not enough there to build on for a show in this day and age. Uh, but then again, it could surprise me. I don't know. Who knows? So I'm going to give it a chance, definitely. So there you go. Um, this one, it's, it's, I worry about people watching it, but I think I'm going to like it. It's suburg, uh, suburgatory. Uh, suburgatory. I think I'm saying that right. It's pretty much a teenage daughter whose dad finds out she's sexually active, and so they move to the suburbs. And it kind of gets into that whole kind of crazy little... Uh, almost... The closest I've seen to it before is kind of like Home Alone... Not Home Alone. Problem Child 2. In Problem Child 2, uh, John Ritter's character ha moves the Problem Child to this kind of... Uh, just this suburb with a bunch of women. Just a bunch of single women. And that's what seems to be going on is the man in here gets a lot of attention and the daughter is kind of like not getting as much attention as she used to back home because uh, there are a lot more fake looking girls around and uh, 
it's real superficial and she's talking about how there's a lot more plastic now she's in the suburbs blah 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 little tag quotes there and she gets like this uh, buddy who will help her adjust to life and it seemed funny just within the concept of a girl her equal age who will help guide her and that's the rule of the suburbs all these little folklore things come out which I think is gonna be funny to build on I, I'm not gonna get too excited though because I do not think it will last long and if they don't they need to really go deep with a lot of this stuff you know I, I love the kind of shows that just kind of go or any kind of show that just goes deep into something and makes its own kind of folklore about everything like Pete and Pete did and like uh, Recess did where they just they just made this whole kind of unwritten rule about everything and it was fun to learn those things through the show so if that does that it, it can go far it can go far so yeah, I'm looking at my list now. Uh, uh, I hate my teenage daughter. I actually saw this and it was like the set from uh, uh, what, Grace Under Fire. So uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll see. I, I think the idea is just a mother who's jealous of the opportunities afforded to her teenage daughter and how her best days are behind her. I think that's the idea. And it has the... Wait. Oh, I'm drawing a blank, but the girl from My Name is Earl that played his ex-wife. Joy, Joy, she played Joy. So she's here doing this. And uh, again, it has potential. I think there's a lot of funny things you could get out of this whole situation where someone's jealous of the opportunities afforded to their child. So we'll see. And also, it could also, it has a lot the higher end edge of being bad. Very, very bad. Uh, moving on. Terra Nova, which I don't know. I need something cheesy and CGI to to wing me off of the the sadness of not getting any more V. So Terra Nova is where this family goes live with this know, dinosaur hunter to rock anyone. And uh, they live among the dinosaurs or whatever. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. It's going to look really CGI, but I kind of love that cheese stuff sometimes, just like that almost uh, Exena or Hercules kind of show where uh, they, they work with what they can do on the computer and the acting sometimes kind of hammy, but there's always something happening, so I really can't complain. It's just, it's a, you know, it's fun. It's a little diversion. That's what I want. I don't want, sometimes, you know, there's enough deep thinking or just funny shows out there. I want something like just you know, watch some useless character that can't act die real fast in. And that's what I'm hoping that is. It probably will be. We'll see how it goes. It probably won't last long, so that's my only uh, worry here. So, And hopefully they're, you know, light on the talking and heavy on the action. So, yeah, that's what the, I'm looking... That, uh, that's not what I'm looking forward to. That's uh, what I'm torn on. I don't know if they'll turn out good. I don't know if they'll turn out bad. I don't know if I'll keep watching. I don't know if I'll stop watching. I don't know if they'll get canceled early or not, but uh, what the heck. you got to have some shows in there that you, you have you know iffy feelings about and you're willing to wade the water and see what happens. That's what watching TV is all about.